Today we take an exclusive behind the scenes look at a student project. Film Academy students Linus and Amit will explain to us how those two adorable monsters learn to morph. <laughs> What is the special thing about this project? You say they morph in 3D? Yes, this, that is uh, our um, unique selling point, if you want so, and uh, it's um, about an uh, old technique called metaboss, and maybe Amit can talk a little bit about it. It's a way to take a couple of points in space and make a mesh around them. The mesh is procedurally generated around the points in space. So it makes a feeling like a plasticine material or a liquid material or any kind of material that is bendable and morphable. It reminds also much on clay stuff. Yeah. Right? There's also always um, a tendency to morph and, and to change and I think that's really interesting about the animation. Why did you use the meta balls and didn't like animate vertices or something like that? What's the advantage? I think it was much more sane to do it with metal balls than to animate each vertex all the time. It was impossible. I never heard of someone who did that on that scale. I mean, uh, there's the Mindbender stuff. Yeah. And I saw that, that they did something like fingers coming out of a block hand, but it was all pre made with vertices and, and smoothed and stuff. And there's not so much flexibility like in, in the meta ball system where you can change everything around. It's like building with clay um, every frame and uh, just uh, stick stuff together and um, yeah, do individual frames. Mm -hmm. you're, not, uh, you're not constrained to a certain vertex count or a certain polygon mesh. So if you add in hand, uh, a hand, you really add new vertices that form the hand. Now, how did that project develop? How did it start? How did you get the first idea? Uh, basically, I did um, a very early test um, a few years ago already with a, with a plugin demo version. And it was very limited, but um, it shows much potential. And um, it was also a monster already. A uh, more liquid type of thing, and it was transparent a little bit and stuff. Um, I and remember I saw that, and I, and I think I talked to you after I saw it in some presentation. That could be. Yeah. Uh, so I always want to make something out of it, something real, find a story around it. Uh, so, so the technical idea was basically first. And how did you find the the story idea? I mean. And, and what was the frame? It was a trailer, right? Yes, we did for um, the ITFS to, uh, in Stuttgart. Um, it was um, a one minute, I think, was the limit to do a, a short um, advertising for, for the festival. So it had to be short, it had to be um, clearly understandable, it had, and um, should, should have a a target group for kids. And how did you develop the final story? Did you have the, the characters first and then you morphed them around and saw what you could do with that? Or you really scribbled the morphings first and then technology had to adapt this? Or yeah, how was that? The, the characters are very um, simple, very simplistic. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was easy to, to do uh, um, animation tests with lines and uh, animatics. And I built that really out, but in the end, uh, I changed uh, a lot because uh, there's th that's something really interesting. Because um, at first, I wanted to try the technique to adapt um, what I can do with lines, you know. But then, in the computer, some um, not mistakes, but some uh, incidents happened, mm -hmm. and and then um, you think, yeah, well, maybe that's much cooler or something. Yeah, you can build up on that and do a little bit more freestyle. 
I remember you had all those pose designs that yeah. you sent me, and I had to find a way how to make the rig and to think how the rig can get into those positions uh -huh. and stuff like that. And there were you had really extreme stuff. Then I think a lot of the stuff I couldn't find how to do it in the time we had. Yeah. But I think that after we did some tests and stuff, then we found out new stuff you could do uh -huh. on the computer that you didn't think about when you did all those line tests. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of ideas that came like on the way when we yeah. were developing the technology. And, and, and also from the limitations, from time constraints, we uh, found, out, found out easier ways to, to build around because yeah, everything you, you take in the scene and new mouths and stuff, and uh, it also uh, always will take time, but uh, in the end, maybe there's a much simpler way to, to build something up that's already in the scene, or, mm. um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about the rigging? Uh, the rigging was a very challenging thing for me because uh, the idea was because of those monsters had to be so flexible and so morphable. And I wanted for the animator to feel like he can do anything he wants and like he's dealing with plasticine or anything like that. So I created everything procedurally in Softimage in the eye system. So there's no, almost no bones, maybe a little bit in the arms, but the whole uh, the whole body of the monster is procedurally generated around a, a curve inside of Softimage and you can basically tell how, uh, how how much tessellation you want or how much division you want in that mesh and we had to do that also later because when we when Linus did the polygonizing on that it was always very important how much tessellation it has on the mesh because Otherwise, we we will get some holes yes, inside. Was, was a yeah, so the mesh is procedurally tessellated depending on the size it has, so it will fit later to the polygonizer, which was a very interesting thing. And so even the basic object on the rig is not doesn't have a constant vertex count or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's also procedural. So everything is built around this curve and wherever you take that curve the, the mesh is generated around it so you can really stretch it and make a motion paths and lines with it to animate, to really stretch it. And because I want it to feel like it's an actual material and not just a generated object so when you squash it there are like fat lines that come on the character and when you stretch them there are stretch lines that appear on the character and it really it gets a shape of something that's stretched. I tried to make it like that. And when you twist it, you really can see the material twisting in a way. And everything was it was really interesting to do all this stuff in soft image and ice. Um, which gives you all this amazing control. The other aspect was that all the eyes and all the elements that are attached to the body they are always sticking to the same place in the body and it's, it was also only possible to do it in ice in soft image. Yeah, that was actually really, it's really great about the, the rigging stuff that you everything can sit on, on somewhere on the body. You can switch it around the mouth and, and yeah. that's really cool. You can put as much arms or mouths or eyes that you want. Of course, everything you put on will make the rig slower yeah. especially the mouth, but you can put them and you can move them around wherever you want all the time and you can animate that and you can detach them and connect them and take one arm, detach it and connect it to another character or it's like those potato head things where just that you have yeah. as much holes as you want. But you Yes, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> as much because it's not, there's not one hole that you can yeah. put something and stick it, you can stick it everywhere, yeah. wherever you want. You can do the head on uh, the, the arm on the head or came out of the mouth or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just and everything can be bigger and free. grow and smaller and stretch. That was really interesting to do that. And th that's act actually um, uh, the potential about this polygonizer stuff because uh, then uh, when on the metaball side it will always, um, it will always flow around and, and connect everything. So you don't have, 
seeming lines or what you, or yeah. what you don't want to have. Yeah. And all those objects, they're all all their polygons are created also procedurally. So there's you can always change the vertex count or the resolution or how much detail you want on the character. What was interesting also for the, the mouth part, that the mouth is actually digging a hole inside of the character. So also that was only possible in, in a soft image because of the, all those, uh, how's it called, polygon? Topology uh, nodes. Topology nodes, yeah. So I could actually cut a hole procedurally inside the object. That is really cool. It will calculate every frame whenever yeah. you change something. It will recalculate yeah. them. So we didn't have to care time. about UVs for that purpose. Or Usually when you attach objects to other optics, you really have to take care of UVs, but we didn't have to do that. Could you put textures on it? Yes. A bit, uh, yeah, a little bit. It could. Uh, I did some tests actually with... Uh, uh, that weren't so much successful because they took a lot of time and uh, they. Um, but basically, I, I did some tests with, with the with the particles who I um, connect to the to, to the surface yeah. or to the rig, and then uh, these get projections out of uh, a procedural texture, and um, we test that a little bit around. I mean, the polygonizer has some some. Um, options for UVs, yeah, for some procedural UVs, but um, we didn't use it because um, we um, already get from the from the polygonizer mesh um, enough detail, like uh, a little, um, um, not not that super clean um, surface. Yeah. So it already has a, a, the charm of of clay, and we don't want to push that um, yeah. further. I think you're also looking for a very simple material kind of render. Yeah. We didn't really need those textures. It it um, it would uh, take time from, yeah, from. We didn't have the time to go into that. Yeah. Back to the technology. I'm not sure if I fully understood yet. The polygonizer makes a mesh on on top of what you. Yeah, but what what is under that? What you, does basically you can take whatever you want. You uh, can take curves, just locators, nulls, um, or um, surfaces, or um, or polygon meshes. That's basically the most part we use. Also, um, because when when you use polygon meshes that are already rigged, it's that's like in a basic three D production, yeah. and then. Um, um, we hide all that in the end. We didn't render that polygon mesh because we use uh, use this mesh to um, build around this uh, metal ball, margin cube stuff. There's only the eyes, I think, that are uh, separate, uh, separate render or not hide in, in the render. And uh, it's like we, you take all the objects you want to put them together and it like puts a, a wrap around all of them and connects everything you know, in another layer. So what would you say was the hardest challenge of the project? Uh, for me personal it was um, um, building around a, a new pipeline thing um, I didn't fully understand and, and um, uh, was there was a lot constrained to the, the rigging side because things had to be done early and but I want to have much uh, room for for flexible um, uh, stuff and, and so so we built that up in a, in a amount of time in a lot like every other process we always wished we had a bit more time yeah. all the time and so everything was a bit squashed together and because I didn't, I personally didn't do anything like this in this kind of pipeline before, in this procedure. So I think the whole pipeline and the whole process of how we get from the basic rig and to the animation and then to put all the metabol system on it and then to send it to the render farm and render it and what the results are. So everything was a bit new, at least for me and I think also some of it for Linux. So the whole process was kind of 
we didn't know exactly from the beginning how it's gonna be, so we always had to swim around it. Yeah, we or we we know. Actually, we we uh, we have to found out uh, because uh, yeah, there came lots of problems around and then you didn't think of. Um, so so, the, for example, I did the test on one machine, but we uh, have here a render farm, and then um, we we need, I need we need to cache the, the stuff, and I didn't think of that, and just hit render, and then the next day everything is getting calculated differently because of different computers and all that stuff you don't want to think about, but uh, yeah, you have to find out. <laughs> that took a lot of time actually. From I mean, we had just a few weeks to render everything out then and yeah. test it. Um, so that was the, the biggest challenge, I think. Cool. Yeah, thank you very much, very interesting. <laughs> what do you think about it? Could you think about some uses for this technology? Please leave them a nice comment. And please contact us if you have a project that you would like to show to the world. And for now, you can like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.